Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's just worship in the spirit right now. Hallelujah. If you don't have the gift of tongues, that's fine. Just just meditate and worship in your own words. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, speaking in tongues, uh, worshiping in the Spirit is high praise to God because it's not just what we're thinking. It's the Holy Spirit moving through us. It's His words. It's our voice, but it's His words. And today, the, you know, even through the, the songs picked this morning, He's telling you to praise him. No matter the circumstances you're in, he is telling you to praise him. Because praise is our strength. And you need strength when you're in the middle of, of problems, right? You need strength when you're in the middle of your brain going where it shouldn't go. How many have brains that sometimes don't obey? Oh, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one here. <laughs> And it says that we are to, we are to bring into subjection everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, right? And every thought into the captivity of Christ. Hallelujah. What, what power people have. You know, you can either bless or curse. And when you bless, you bring life. You bring light, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I felt like today that God was saying, come on, come on, come on, come on. I find when we have specific words for our house, there's always a battle after. Uh, do you know, vic victory usually has something that you have to fight at the end of it. Thank God for victories, but then suddenly, you know, you can get, a, you can get an amazing prophetic word, and the next day all hell breaks out. I remember Pastor Len Zuneman saying, sometimes, you know, after a while, I, I didn't want to get words anymore because I, <laughs> I, I knew that I'd be in battle. And yet scripture says that we actually fight. We actually fight with the prophetic word given to us. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, a, it's powerful to pray what God has spoken to you. It's powerful, absolutely powerful. Thank you, Father. Remember when I was a... Uh, Young woman, my 20s. I can remember back that far in my 20s. And uh, during the Jesus People movement, and we'd just taken the Jesus People into People's Church, and, and we had a prophet by name of Cody, Wild Bill Cody. And he was from New Zealand. And the week before, he had died. He had been electrocuted in a baptismal tank in Calgary. Now you're wondering, how come he's preaching a week later? Well, the rest of the story is, it, he grabbed a mic that was a live mic, and he was in the water. 
and uh, was electrocuted. And another pastor with John Lucas was in the water with him. Some of you know who John Lucas is in Calgary. And uh, so the other pastor came and just ripped the wires right out because they couldn't turn it off or something was going wrong. Anyway, they, and, and they dragged him out of the water, dead. You know, there was a, the St. John ambulance came, you know, everything, dead. And uh, <laughs> he said, it was like being peeled from a banana. And he says, and I just started going up, just going up. And he says, then he heard a voice that said, Jesus, bring our little brother, you short, Jesus, bring our little brother back. Jesus, bring our little brother back. And he says, and, uh, and he says, and he felt himself descend into his body. And so it kind of freaked the St. John ambulance guys out, but, and everybody. But <laughs> so anyway, of course, they take him to the hospital. And they know he'd been electrocuted because he has the burn marks from head to toe. Right? The next morning, he walks out of there. Totally free. One little mark here. His body totally healed. I don't know why here. Maybe God reminded him of stuff. I, who knows what? Who knows why these things happen? But anyway, totally healed. Yeah. And he sent a message to his wife. That was before you know, all our communications today. I think it was a telegram. It says, great things are happening. Jesus is raising the dead. <laughs> so anyway, here we are a week later. And he was very, um, he could be lots of fun, but very black and white guy, you know, no fooling around. And so he said, I have a prophetic word. I have a, oh, no, he's very dramatic. I have a word from God for three people. And I do not want to be interrupted. You kind of pick things up, right? So anyway, I start praying, and I thought, oh, no, I wanted the three. And, and, the, and the awesomeness of God is the first time I ever felt that awe of God. That, I see when it talks about the fear of the Lord. It's talking about awe that leads to worship. And I felt that awe of the Lord, and I'm saying to the Lord, no, tell me tomorrow, tell me tomorrow. Like I was just, <laughs> you're obviously, you're going to read my mail. I don't know why not everybody don't know my mail. You're like, you know, he can. And you know what? God is not a gossip. He's an encourager, and he's a deliverer. He does deliver. <laughs> so, so, and he had, a, he had them put a, a chair at the front. First guy came, kneeled at the chair. He had the word. I mean, serious stuff. Next one, serious stuff. And then Pastor Lawrence comes up to me and go, I have my eyes like this. He come over like he goes, he wants you. I went, oh, man, okay. So go up. And as I'm going, I don't even know why I ended up telling this story, but as I'm going, there was a guy during the Jesus people. He was a real character. And... Uh, he wasn't that impressed with women. And I was getting the last word. <laughs> and I'm walking, and I can feel him starting to stir up. I was thinking, oh, shut up, keep down. Don't move, stay seated, stay seated. I was more concerned about him. And then he gets up and starts exhorting. And the preacher said, shut up and sit down. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Well, he got very mad, thumped out, traumatic through the doors, you know, all that stuff. I'm thinking, oh, thanks a lot, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. <laughs> but it's interesting because hell does come to try and steal the word from you. And that can happen dramatically like that or simply just giving you a bad day and you go with it and you don't, and you, instead of steering yourself back. So, but you know, that man prophesied my future. He prophesied into my future. And I, I believe when God sends people, you know, we pray for God. We, from the beginning of about like, we look after the people that God sends us. We pay them well. I tell you, you never go out of here with a $200 offering if you're a traveling ministry. You know, you go, we bless, we bless. 
Why shouldn't we? They come, they come and plant in us. So last week, when Sean Gabig was here, I really believe it was the word of the Lord for our time, for our time. I'll go a little bit, just hit a few things here, but just the prophetic words were just awesome. And uh, I'm going to try and get them typed up for whoever had the words last week, but, but it was really, really awesome. Isn't that wonderful how God just sends us people and, and, and gives us a wonderful word? So if you haven't heard it, and you really should go online. Uh, our Facebook, Abundant Life Ministries Edmonton. And you can, you can pick us up. We're on twice a week. Yeah, we have a midweek encouragement with Venice and I usually. And, and uh, you know, we just, we started it during COVID because we figured, man, we need encouraged halfway through the week here. So, but we've kept it up because we, you know, we get thousands of views. Uh, in Canada, I've started doing it more in Canada, and it's p- picking up now in Canada, but, but we're in Uganda, we're in Kenya, we're in Thailand, we're in Rwanda, you know, and uh, it's amazing how many people. So anyway, we're, we want to be a blessing. Look up. <laughs> Look up. What's the scripture? You can read it back at me. Third John one two. It's interesting. Prosper prosper means uh, to be straight. It means to be right. You're doing the right thing. It means to push forward, to be secure, to be successful. That also means to succeed in business. Interesting. Hallelujah. It means you walk and live a certain way. It means to advance. It means to be safe and to be well. Yeah. Prosperity has lots to it. But you notice the way we prosper depends on the condition of the soul. So God wants to prosper. There's no doubt about that. He wants to prosper no matter what's going on. He wants to prosper uh, whether the economy is great or the economy isn't. He is not dependent on man's economy. He has ways. He has ways. (laughs) He he can bring in finances, and not only just finances, but what you need, right? We were were talking uh, on Wednesday night about when God made uh, jobs. We were praying for jobs. We were praying for Kathy Borgstrom and Ben and and Jerry Walker. They all needed jobs. Every one of them got a job, a new job, but it was a brand new job, a brand new position, positions that had never been opened before. So Ben, what was that position? Can't remember exactly. Uh, They hired me to become the machinist millwright welder at the hospital. have one before. <laughs> you know, just gave me my own shop, said, here's a half a million dollars a year, make this place work. And he made the great nuns work right till he retired. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Kathy made a new job for you, help nursing mamas. There was there was never a position before, wow. yeah. And Jerry, he's, he's away this weekend. Uh, Jerry got a job at Nate. It was never there before. He was teacher, mechanics, all kinds of stuff. We ended up doing, but there was never a position before. And he says the day and the day he retired, the position quit. <laughs> Don't you love it? I mean, and he was very blessed in his job, and people were very blessed to have him there. So he prospered. He prospered. But isn't it interesting because it wasn't, it wasn't the, what man was doing. It was what God was positioning. And God can position us. Part of it is hearing, for sure. We found out that out last week in particular. But it's just having your heart 
towards the Lord and not towards anxiety, not towards worry. Because uh, that, that's the black stuff. That's the black stuff. See, well, you don't know my life. Well, you don't know mine either, but I got the same word as you do. Be anxious for nothing. But everything, and everything give thanks. Everything give thanks. Why, thanksgiving opens doors. Thanksgiving keeps you clear in your head. Thanksgiving melts your heart. Jesus' name. So, Father, we're just so thankful today for this scripture. And, Father, we thank you for the healing of our soul. Uh, you know, your soul is uh, uh, how, how you think. Your, your soul is, uh, you know, uh, who you are. It, it's that part, you know, you're a spirit being that has a soul that lives in a body. It's who you are. And your soul is how, you, how are you thinking? How, how, or how are you looking at things? How, what are you letting into your heart? What are you let, allowing? And what, is that for good or for evil? And God says, listen, I, I want, I'm the healer of the soul. When you get born again, your soul isn't 100% good. You still have to work things through you. with him. I mean, there's stuff in the soul. But many of you now look back, and you can't even remember what was in your soul. You're so far away from it now, how God healed your soul and continues to heal your soul. Amen. So today I'm just very thankful that prosperity means uh, to advance. God, to advance. He's the God who multiplies. He's not the God who takes away. He's the God who multiplies. Amen. God bless you in your giving today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, that the fellow I was talking about, he ended up in a, a sect um, that figured women came from where they were the seed of Satan uh, kind of thing. And, uh, you know, he came out, I found out later, much later, they did came out of it, but it took him 20 years. At 20 years, who knows what he could have been doing, but because he was quite a fireball, like, you know. He, uh, <laughs> he was very bold, very, all these things that would have been very beneficial in the kingdom, and I'm hoping became beneficial in the kingdom after. But, uh, and God was kind. You know, God's always kind. He, in God's correction and him telling you stuff, it's saving you from something. He was trying to save him from something. You know, I, I remember one time he wanted to go to some meetings in Seattle. So he was hitchhiking down to the border. I think it was in B.C. And we said, you're not going to get over like, you know, you're a criminal. You've got a record. <laughs> so God forgives you, but Canada doesn't. And uh, so, but no, he was going. He was going. So he went down. He got to the border and they said, no, you can't come. And he was mad at God because he couldn't get across the border. Even though everyone told him, don't go, right? So he's standing there, and he says, God, if you don't get me a ride right to my door, I'll never talk to you again. Guy pulls up, gets in, drives him right to his door. God is kind, even to the stubborn, you know? He is kind, but, you know, stubbornness is, is an idolatry, right? It's idolatry, stubborn. And uh, so even in that, you know, I think God is so kind to this guy and tried to save him of 20 years of error, 20 years of error. So how, how important it is to hear the discipline of the Lord? Now, God doesn't make you sick. He doesn't make you break your arm. But there's ways he's saying, uh-uh, no, not that way. I remember my mom telling me she was a young widow, and, and she was working part-time at Woodward's. Some of you don't even know what Woodward's is, but it was, this, it was a great store, actually. And, uh, and she says she kind of, this guy that worked there, one of the managers and stuff, she says, we were kind of connecting you know, she says, you know when you're starting to be attracted to somebody. You know? And uh, she says, he walked in front of her in the elevator. She starts to walk in, and she got an audible voice. 
low. I was thinking, she said, okay. I was thinking, what would have happened if she hadn't listened to that no? She wouldn't have married Tompa. You know, great Christian guy, looked after her right to the very end. She wouldn't have married Tompa. And how important they were to our house for decades. We wouldn't have had the Jesus people movement if mom and Tom didn't put finances towards it. They paid for it. They paid for that uptown room where we had revival. They paid for it. What does our obedience do? Well, they'd never have thought about the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that we've affected out of this house. Really, the missionaries we have, different parts of the world. You know, I don't know where everyone is today, but we got people to fill these seats. Right? I wish everyone would come at the same day. I'd just be such a happy pastor to see everybody's face. But how important, how important. You know, and uh, I look at my own life. I mean, there's times, man, I should have obeyed, and it got goofy. You know, but the, the one call I obeyed was flying back to the city here from Ontario and uh, God spoke to me on the plane. I was living like the devil. And I was going to set up a drug deal out of Lebanon at the time. And God spoke to me. And it wasn't like an audible voice, but it was like, I heard God. God. <laughs> I heard God, and he said, you're not going back to sell drugs. You're going back to serve me, and this is your last call. Well, how many know, okay, 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 like, he wasn't going to kill me. My life was. But I did not, I did not serve God and be happy about it. I serve God because I was going to die if I didn't. How would you like to have a follower like that? So I went forward in that little Baptist church, give myself back to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ended up leading the Jesus people in the city. Like, it, <laughs> you can't plan these things. But I said no. See, your life means something. Your life means something. I said no. You wouldn't have the tremendous, wonderful children that I've had. <laughs> Or the granddaughters and grandsons. I mean, the son-in-laws. It just, it just goes bigger and bigger. And I'm just talking about one little life. See, I'm just talking about one little life. Who knows if Susie, what would have happened to Susie? Don't know. I am sure God would have got her, right? He got her into abundant life, her and Gaby. I remember the first time they were there. How many years ago would that have been? 30 years ago. I looked over and they, they had the biggest grins. I remember the grin, you know how they got big grins, the biggest grins, and, and I was preaching and they just like grinning through the whole thing. I thought, boy, they're enjoying this, whoever they are, and, <laughs> and brought their mama, Edith, and she didn't want to come. She didn't want to come. She wasn't going to serve this Jesus. She became a life giver in our church. Her sister sitting here, Rob's mom, Heidi. 
just by, see, our obedience always affects something. It's not just us deciding what we're going to do with our life. It's what God's wanting to do so you can affect the earth. You can affect the earth. One little life. What about your life? I probably told this story before, but I don't know why I'm going here testimonial, but thank you. <laughs> My cheerleaders here. Um, I was in a woman's meeting in Calgary, a very large woman's meeting. I'm being honest with you here. And uh, I don't, because I don't usually think this way, so I can tell you this. Um, matter of fact, I don't think this way. And so I'm sitting in there. They had this great main speaker. She was really good. And then she had another speaker. And I thought, Lord, I can preach better than her. Wasn't that sweet? And honestly, I don't, I don't think like that. And then I thought, then I repented quickly and said, but Lord, have I done anything with my life? Like when you get in that kind of, you know, judgmental thing, I tell you, everything then becomes wrong. I thought, did I do anything right? Is my life worth anything? I mean, just, I just had a pity party in the middle of people getting touched by the Holy Ghost. How many have been there? So I went in the washroom in the break, and it was packed with women. And so I'm standing at the sink, washing my hands. I had three different women who I did not even know come up at me at different times, just in that short time, say, oh, Pastor Eve, you led me to Jesus. And three different women came up in that meeting and said that I had led them to the Lord. I didn't remember any of them. So how many people do you affect you don't even remember? That you don't even remember. Who you are in the kingdom matters. Jesus came to destroy the work of the devil that took away dominion of, took the dominion of the earth off of man's, off of man and took it himself. And Jesus Christ came to destroy that work. He came to destroy the work of the devil. And so that's why he kept saying, thy kingdom come. He preached the kingdom has come. John the Baptist preached the kingdom has come. What Satan had done had robbed us, mankind, from dominion. Jesus Christ came to bring back dominion. That's why no other religion works. Because he didn't come to give us a religion. He came to give us a kingdom. Kingdom of heaven. To enlarge the earth. So we're around, we're doing kingdom business. Kingdom business. Hallelujah. He just didn't come to get you to heaven. He came to bring dominion back to his kids, those who serve him. Of course, you have to be spiritually born again to get into the kingdom. But you don't stay there. You, became instru you become instruments of bringing the kingdom, of enlarging the kingdom, sharing your faith, doing what kingdom does. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you know, last week, let me just, just grab a few things from last week. Uh, Sean, Gabby was speaking about. He said that the Lord kept emphasizing a scripture to him, at John 1, 11, or sorry, 11, 11. And it's talked about the death of Lazarus. And so he knew what that scripture was in there, uh, you know, what was in 11, but she didn't know what that scripture was in particular. And, uh, and it's actually Jesus said that Lazarus is asleep, and I'm going to wake him up. And he felt the Lord was speaking to him uh, that the church has been asleep in its quest to hear him. To hear his voice. It's not just about being a good person. You know, there's some people that are nicer 
than some Christians you meet. But they're not going to the, uh, they're going to different directions. It's not about how nice you are, but please be nice. Nothing worse than a cranky Christian, but please be nice. You know, the fruits of the Spirit are for you, right? It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just that. It's that you've come to spread something. You've become, you become like a virus for good, you know, that you've come to spread something. And uh, it says that, that we are to wake up to recognize when God is speaking to us. And he speaks all the time. I think a lot of what he was talking about was really that word of knowledge, knowing things that you don't normally know, you know. I know this week I was, I was uh, in someone's house and I left. Then I remembered that I had saw me having communion with this person. I'd even put communion cups in my car. I keep them there. But anyway. And uh, I was already in my car ready to go and I thought... You just say, well, I can do it because now everybody's doing what they're doing and all that kind of stuff. You make all these ridiculous comments. But anyway, but I thought, no. Then I really remembered. Then I thought, no, I better go in. Then I remembered what, what Sean had said about being nudged. Yeah. That boy, I better go in. And I went in and had communion, and Jesus came. Jesus came. I could have missed it. I don't know how many hundred things I've missed, but I didn't miss that one. Right? So many times God gives you a nudge, and you fail it, and then you find out later, oh, if only I'd done that. Well, he doesn't condemn you for it. He goes, next time remember what it feels like. Next time remember what my voice felt like, and do what I tell you to do, that you can be a blessing to others, a deliverer for others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And remember, he says, God gave him a vision of earwax coming out of ears. That disgusting vision. And, uh, but that our ears, and remember, he prayed that the wax would come out of our ears. Do you believe that's possible? Why not? We believe it. We believe it. If you weren't there last Sunday, we say the wax comes out of your ears. That we are able to hear his voice. Listen, his word is his voice. We, we know that. Uh, but, the pl- but the nudgings of God is recognizing his presence and his direction. And he nudges. He nudges. When we fail, get up again. Um, I remember when kids were younger and we were, we'd gone after a meeting. We were in this restaurant and it wasn't a place that we usually work. But uh, so we were some friends, and there was this young woman, drunk or in a skunk, you know, sitting on one of the stools, kind of hanging over, you know. <laughs> you know how it's amazing when we're drunk, we think we mean we're doing great things, and just we just look like idiots. I, I think if we all took camera shots of people who are drunk or stoned and showed it to them after. They would be embarrassed. I was just thinking, like, a, I thought I was being so cool. And, uh, you know, you weren't. You weren't. So I have been asking the Lord because I noticed in Scripture how important the poor is to God. He always talks about looking after the poor. It doesn't mean they have to stay poor. We need to help them come out of being poor. But how God was, and I, and I said, I remember saying to God, well, we don't have money. How do we help the poor? You know, we didn't have a lot of money. And this, so I was sitting there with friends eating, looked over at this girl, and God said, there is the poor. I said, okay, kept eating. And he says, take her home with you. I said, we're supposed to take that girl home with us. Really? Yeah. And uh, I think the owner was about ready to phone the police on her stuff, so... <laughs> <laughs> into the car, take her home. I mean, she's almost out of it the whole time. Put her on our couch. She wakes up the next morning, these little kids running around, little white kids running around. And uh, so she says, wait a minute, how did I? So I started explaining. 
uh, you know, that God really cared about her and just wanted her to be in a safe place. I don't know what would have happened to that girl. Don't know. Find out when I get to heaven, I guess. But you don't know who you're saving by just obeying. And then you know, Mary just drove her back to wherever she lived, I guess. And, and uh, I often thought about that, that young woman. I was thinking, you know, what was God keeping her from? And thank God I was obedient to the voice of the Lord. It was just a nudging. It wasn't like a dramatic. It was just the nudging. Hallelujah. So he talked about impression. It was an impression. Remember, he said there's three things in particular. Impression. Uh, he talked about he was in a kind of a teaching service, and, and uh, there was a guy came in at the back. He didn't know him. And so he just felt to bind the spirit of witchcraft. We do that stuff all the time. In this house, we do it all the time. Sunday, Sunday, I'm often coming against a spiritual force that's influencing lives. And you do it. And we, we rise up against it automatically, don't we? Like, uh, we, we know we just rise up against it. It's not that, oh, gee, I think, uh, I think uh, this is happening today in church. No, we rise up and say, depression is not going to affect the house today. And we know that people are suffering from it. Because God just said it, right? And we come against it. We don't know how many things are broken off of us when we come together as the ecclesia, as, as the church of God, and break powers. We don't know what's affecting our families when we do that. We, we, we don't know. Remember one time my, my mom had uh, phoned me. I was living in the Duke at the time, and my, my brother... My youngest brother, he's a teenager. So she says, yeah, he's been pretty sick, some kind of flu or something. I got off the phone. So I just started praying for him. And the Lord said, he's nigh unto death. And Lorna phoned, I think she was in Grand Prairie even at the time, my sister. She felt like the same thing. We started to pray. So she took him to the told, I told my mom and says, you know, I think you should get him house anyway. She took him to clinic, and his appendix had bust, burst. And had been contained. Poison didn't go through his body. It had been contained. Nigh unto death. That was a nudge. That was a nudge. Can I tell you something? Because many times, especially if, you, if you're an anxious type person, you, this can get complicated for you because you're anxious about stuff. That's why we have to get rid of anxiety so we can really f- hear when there's a warning. And a warning is not usually your heart, you know, the sensing of your heart, because that's usually where, oh, I'm afraid of this, or, you know, what if this happens? You know, I'm, you know my kid's over there, what if that's going to happen? That's hard stuff. But when the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, it's like in your gut. So I always say, is this my heart because I'm anxious about this? Or is this the Holy Spirit speaking to me? And it becomes very evident. It becomes very evident. One thing, your heart starts to calm down, and you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. So God's always speaking. God's always speaking. He spoke so, with my kids. He spoke so much, so much. Remember Faith? She was going to work. My middle daughter going to work, and just a very short time after, I'm just, oh, something's up. We need to be sensitive to the something up. Something's up. So I just started praying in the spirit. Thank God for protection and stuff. And uh, she was going down this large parking garage and her car quit steering wheel froze the stupidest thing anyway the steering wheel's closed you had a car like that and so for her to go round it was like you know she barely could do it and finally was able to go off and get break it but that was the exact same time as my spirit was disturbed god wants you to disturb your spirit 
so that we can pray and protect people. Or breakthrough stuff, blessing stuff. It's not always about dangers, blessing stuff. Thank you, Jesus, you know. Jobs that he gives us, right? Breakthrough stuff, blessing stuff. This is my sheep here, my voice. God speaking. We just have to be sensitive to say, okay, here's the thing. It's usually three things. If you're hearing something, let's say you're looking at someone, you don't even know the person, and you felt, you know, I just feel like that person's in trouble. I should be praying for him or something, you know. Here's the thing. Is it you thinking it? Why would you think it? Why would you be thinking, oh, that person needs help? Is it the devil? Well, why would he tell you that people need help? Or how about if it's God telling you that person needs help? Or that person needs an encouraging word? You know, Jerry, a little back ago, was talking about the lady in Costco that you saw with, you know, this young mom and all these kids and, you know, pretty frantic stuff with shopping with children. A lot of you understand that. And uh, so he felt like he had a word for her, but just kind of, you know, passed it off. But when he went to park, you know, get to his car, here she is. So, you know, he couldn't get away from the fact that God wanted him to speak to her. So he went and began to encourage her. So I'm a Christian, sometimes I hear from God. And starts to encourage her that God sees her, told her she's doing a good job, started edifying, the lady starts crying. She says, I, show, I so needed that today. Because you bring light into a dark place. That's what exhortation is. Exhortation is bringing light into a dark place. Exhortation is one of the gifts, you know, that God gives, exhortation. And the gift of exhortation, is, it's people, people get up and begin to encourage, you know, in a... In a in a meeting, or you're sitting at a table and away they go. They begin to encourage. It's actually, some people have the gift of it. Many times, people with exhortation confuse it with prophecy. Because really, it's very difficult to just bring exhortation in a church setting, but you can do prophecy. So it doesn't have the same power as prophecy. It's a different gift. But it's encouraging. But if you're prophetic, uh, you need to pray into that. If you're a daughter, thank God for the gift you have. Exhortation. It means to build up. You know, in, to encourage means to put in courage. When you encourage people, you, you may, you're not leading them to Jesus going down the aisle. Well, maybe. Oh. But, you know, the, the clerk probably doesn't have enough time to get bored. She's busy putting your grocery through. But you know what? You can go in the word of the Lord and be a blessing to whoever's behind that till. You can change her or his, na- his, his day. You don't have to be another grumpy customer. Now, honestly, I can be bad here. I hate, I hate being in line, all of this stuff, right? I'm just not the best. And, I, and I, I'm way better than I was because I have no right to make someone's day worse. Why would I have that right when God says we're to be a blessing? Sometimes you want to make it worse. <laughs> but the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. <laughs> so since he talked about, you know, my sheep hear my voice, and in, in, that, in that scripture, it's, it's, it's like acoustics, that we train ourselves to be able to hear the voice of God. And he confirms his word. He confirms his word. It can be something very simple. I think in the beginning it's always simple. Or it can be something wild. I think the wildest thing I ever read or heard was a lady going home, and she usually went by and picked up some milk, 
from a grocery store, you know, fast food and, or something. And, and instead, she went to a different place. She just felt to go to another place. It wasn't even in her route. She just went to another place, pulled up. Lord spoke to her. I want you to go in and stand on your head. I would be quick to do that, wouldn't you? <laughs> and I imagine she wasn't in a skirt. She, and uh, so she went in. It was just her and the guy behind the till. She went to where the pillar was and stood on her head. She comes down. The guy behind the counter is weeping. He's weeping. And he has said, God, if you're real, have someone come in and stand on their head. <laughs> How kind of God. How kind of God. I remember during Jesus people, there was one guy. I mean, he was, he was the one I, that I said that I said to the Lord, he'd be the last one to get saved. And God said, watch this. Yeah. He got saved that night. But he... He would say, if you're real, have someone come in with a blue top. Next person walked in with a blue top. He went through, okay, someone come in with a red top. Someone would walk in with a red top. He did it the whole night. And, at this, and he was an antagonistic guy. But how God wants to love people. He, see, God knows why he's antagonistic. God knows why these people are angry. You were once angry. God knows these things. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Another one. Remember the hamburger story? Tell it again, okay. <laughs> he was talking about he was in the service in some other country, but then he was in the service. And, uh, oh, I started talking about that guy that came in when he was teaching. And he kind of looked back at him, didn't know him, kept going. And the guy came up at the end of the service and said, and he felt to bind witchcraft. That's where he was going. And uh, so he bound witchcraft. So the guy came up after and says, how come you looked at me when you bound witchcraft? He goes, oh, I wasn't looking at you. And he goes, yeah, you were looking. No, oh, I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> but in the spirit realm, he says he, he felt lightning come, crash him. And then a voice said to him, Get rid of those tarot cards in your bag and bury them. See, that's a different kingdom. It's a dark kingdom. And uh, it was just a nudge of the Holy Spirit. Or he could have just said, I bind you witchcraft. Because sometimes you do that. But no, he proclaimed it. Man got delivered. Anyway, he's in a meeting. And uh, the Lord told him to say, Hamburger. He wasn't that quick to say it, but God kept saying it so funny. He said, hamburger. No response. So he said it again, hamburger. He's beginning to feel like an idiot. He said it one more time, hamburger. No response. Okay. And went on preaching. So a guy jumps up after in the service, and he had his knee crushed. He had a terrible accident. and had his knee crushed, and it was instantly healed. Totally whole. And anyway, he came up after and said, yeah, that hamburger thing was for me. And he says, why? And he says, well, I had a dream about three weeks ago. And in the dream, I was with my friends. And, we're, and I was saying, we should have a word that when we say it, everything aligns. Like our soul aligns, our body aligns. I mean, just a strange dream. And, uh, he, was, and he was talking about alignment during that, this service. And, and so, and he said, in the, in the dream, he said, we should have a word. We should have a word that means, you know, alignment, something. We're going to be aligned. And his friend in the, in the dream said, how about macaroni? He goes, no, 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 not macaroni. Let's have hamburger. Hamburger will be our word. Do you know the thing is, when, you, when God is moving you towards people, he's probably already working. So he's probably already done something. Remember when we had the um, spiritual reading at uh, K Days or, or exhibition? And, you know, 
We figured about 2,000 people got born again in that 10 years. And so it started with the truth about angels, because angels were a big thing at the beginning. And uh, uh, Rita and Lorne, they, you know. And then Rita was very prophetic, but she's also an evangelist. So she started working with people. We had like five different uh, tables set up, free spiritual readings. And I remember her coming to talk to me about it. I am the pastor, you know. You should come and talk to me about some stuff. Just, just, a, just a thought. But anyway, and uh, that was sarcastic, by the way. And, and, so, and so I said, well, I don't know. Spiritual readings, that's really occultish. You know, I don't think Christians would be too impressed. She goes, I'm not after the Christians. <laughs> okay. And they would line up. They would line up. Remember, at one time, there was five tables. There was five continents. People there. Big biker comes with his two guys, sits down, starts weeping. And the word of the Lord came to him. Remember, a, a woman deep in witchcraft, occultish, was, lived in Winnipeg, no, Saskatchewan. And she flew. She got on the plane, didn't know why. Came on the plane, came to Edmonton. Got off the plane, went to the fair. And there's lots of occultish f- stuff there too, right? But we, we outshone them all, obviously. And so, so she came and sat down where Rita was. She said, I don't know why I'm here. And Rita just started in the name of, uh, through the name of the Lord, read her mail. That woman got delivered, born again, left, got back on her plane. The nudging, the nudging. So Bertie's good at this stuff too. And uh, so she was sharing with one lady. And so she said at the end, would you like to have that, this Jesus into your life? And she goes, well, you know, not just now. So she gave her four spiritual laws and, and uh, wrote her name in the back, Love Bertie. And the woman kind of looks and then she looks and she goes, your name's Bertie? She goes, yeah, my name's Bertie. She goes, I'll have what you have. What you want. I'll, I'll pray that prayer. So Bertie says, what's the difference? The night before, she'd had a dream. And she looked in her window, and there was this bird speaking to her. She couldn't understand what it was saying, but speaking to her. And so the next day, she's talking to her friend. She goes, that bird's giving you a message. And the same day, Bertie... Gives her a message. This is fun. I tell you, it's fun to be in the kingdom. You get such awesome stuff. Because God loves people. He wants you to know he knows your name. He wants you to know where he knows where you live. He wants you to know that he's come to bless you. He's come to set you free. He's come to give you a another pathway and we've you know been there been there it's interesting we could you know my mom was 35 when she got born again that was 35 years without knowing God and yet even at that age wherever you are when you know when you find him is when your life starts it's when your life starts talked about don't disallow your dreams God speaks through dreams and he has the ability to reveal stuff even if it's a frustrated dream it's probably revealing that you're frustrated and do something about it so it's important before you go to bed that you write down things you're wanting in your life don't write down God I need money because that just goes into your dreams. God, I need money. I need money. No. God, I thank you. Because of you, I prosper. Because of you, I prosper. Write it out longhand. Don't type it out. Write it in longhand. You might have to learn longhand to do this, young people. But uh, write it on longhand. I'll have these print if you can't. But this uh, longhand does stuff to the brain. It affects the brain. And, uh, and what happens... What you've now meditated on, the, the, 
you know, we're supposed to meditate. The biggest time of meditation is when you sleep. You are meditating. And when you meditate, it affects your heart. And your heart is a hard thing to change. So you meditate. So you say, thank you, Lord. And you know, you, and it can be a few days. It can be a, like you're, you're suddenly getting these wild dreams from stuff and things like that. But, but in the long run, thank you, Father. Because of you, I prosper. Thank you, Jesus, that you have put in me patience. I'm a patient woman. It can be the very opposite of who you are. I don't know why I picked that one out, but patient woman. And it begins to work on the inside of you because you've gone into meditation. So, you know, don't be looking at your phone before you go to sleep. Matter of fact, get it far away from your bed. We know that's causing problems with our brains. But the last thing you're thinking about is thanksgiving to what God is doing in your life. Write it out. Change your night habit. Interruption. Impression, interruption. God interrupts your life for the benefit of others. And even for your benefit. You know, that young woman that was drunk on the bar stool was an interruption. But with the impression, I had to be interrupted. God does not care if he inconveniences you. (laughs) But God! No, he, he does not care if he inconveniences you. He has to get people. He has to bless people. And you're part of enlarging that kingdom. Thank you, Father. An invitation. God gives you an invitation to help others. We talked about that Mardi Gras and that woman that they're in a very rough area of the Mardi Gras. A woman was very drunk. And so they started looking after her because she was very drunk and they're praying over and all that kind of stuff. And she was pretty inebriated. And she goes, usually when they prayed, you know, they'd straighten out. But man, this woman was right out of it. So they looked after and kind of watched over her for a number of hours. Anyway, they backed the, a year later, same spot, and here's this woman. She's handing out tracts, witnessing her and her husband. A week after this, she got born again. So what happened? During that time, they were speaking life to her. It, you know, invitation to help somebody. It's an invitation. Hallelujah. God gives us lots of invitations to help people. I remember I was dropping someone off at Hope Mission a few years back, and, and I dropped this person off, and then this kind of, this lady, <laughs> she's a little under the weather, you know, a little drunk, and she opens up the, my car door and says, will you drive me to the hotel, the, another awful hotel? And I said, sure, jump in. So she jumps in, and I thought, well, I don't have much time. It was like five minutes to get to the, the hotel. I think it's all closed down now. Though. So we end up talking about Jesus, and she said, my uncle's a prophet. Not a Christian prophet. You know. my, my uncle's a prophet. I goes, really? So am I. <laughs> and I just stopped her in her tracks. She just stopped in her tracks. You know, and then I just started sharing what it meant to, to serve Jesus. Just talked to her about Jesus all the way there. And, and she opens the door. She goes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Out she went. It was like an invitation from God for this woman's life. God gives you invitations. He gives you invitations. He loves you. He loves people. Hallelujah. Repentance means to change your mind. The way you're thinking. Repentance means to turn around and go the other way. And God does that in all kinds of ways. You know, in his car at 19 years old, the presence of God came in. And repentance came in. He changed his mind. 
He says, I'm in. If this is you, I'm in. God wants to make sure all of you today are in. If you are in. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father. God, we're so glad that just just a few stories here, Lord, but they speak to how much you can use people for good. And Father, I thank you for all the seeds sown in this house. All the seeds sown into people. All the seeds sown in prayer. It's an amazing amount of prayer. All those seeds sown that the prayers do not drop to the ground, but they're still alive. Father, there's people that will meet in heaven that we've never knew, but they're there because of prayer. They're there because we sent somebody. We were there because we give finances. God, we're going to have an amazing time. <laughs> we're going to have an amazing time. But now in this time, thank you. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. We are connected to heaven when we have Jesus into our lives. So, Father, today I just thank you. For those online and that we proclaim today, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He is, and I take him as my Messiah, my Savior, my Deliverer. I put my life in his hands, and I will follow. Can we say that today? I put my life in his hands, and I will follow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.